Ah, oh, shit. Here we go again. Hello friends, welcome back to the Unprofessional Opinion channel. My name is Alex and today we're going to be continuing our series on experts' weapons. Mm -hmm. uh, weapons that are considered to be difficult to master, especially by new shooters. Uh, please forgive the monkey suit, I had an internal uh, interview today for a promotion at work. So viewers, as you all should know, firearms are tools. Uh, that are neither good nor evil, they're just built for specific roles, and it's up to the end user to employ them in a safe and uh, ethical manner. However, us being humans, and we being sentient and imaginative creatures, we tend to assign roles, uh, or assign concepts to uh, like good and evil to different weapons. I'd say the most notorious of these would be the AK series of rifles, uh, which have been employed by countless bloodthirsty henchmen in lots of media from video games to film since the 1950s. And then we're going to talk about another bad guy gun uh, in a similar vein that was very popular in media in the 1980s and 1990s. Uh, specifically, the Ingram Model 10 and Model 11 uh, submachine guns. But we're not really talking about the Model 10 itself. What we're going to be talking about are the semi-auto clones that came after. This one specifically is a Cobra M12. Uh, it's in 380 auto, fires from a closed bolt, it's semi-auto, and feeds from these 32 round double stack magazines. A really uh, interesting firearm. Uh, let's, let's talk about the Mac-10 first. Um, MAC-10 is the colloquial term, or MAC for short, and it stands for Military, Oper Military Armaments Corporation, which was the company that built the Ingram Model 10 and Model 11s. And thus, if you are a connoisseur of West Coast hip-hop like myself, you're very familiar with hearing uh, about so quote-unquote MACs in lots of song lyrics. And one of my favorite rappers uh, from the West Side Connection even goes by the name of Mac-10. And so the Mac-10 was developed by a guy named Gordon Ingram uh, in the 1960s as a very lightweight, compact submachine gun uh, that could be employed in close quarters battle. Uh, the tactical community of the time referred to it as fighting in the phone booth. And they saw a lot of both domestic and export success, especially with, within the special operations community. However, in the late 70s, early 80s, uh, Mac kind of went defunct due to some uh, problems ex exporting suppressors. Since the Mac-10 came with a revolutionary psionics uh, suppressor developed by a uh, Mike Werbel and kind of fell by the wayside. However, in 1978, a guy named Wayne Daniels, who was a machinist uh, for a company called RPB, which had bought out the rights to uh, the Mac 10 design, uh, would found his own company called Cobra. Now, Cobra as I see it, was the Keltec of the day. And a lot of Keltec users will obviously be fuming at me making this comparison, but I think Cobra and Keltec have a similar business model. That being developing and producing unique and interesting firearms, but with cheap manufacturing and low quality materials, with 
almost no quality control to speak of. And I hate to rag on companies like Keltec because I think the firearms community, the internet firearms community specifically as a whole, has really come down hard on a lot of companies and is dismissed any product they make as poor or uh, low quality and are not worth their time of day. But I, but I digress. So, Cobra built a lot of uh, weird stuff in the late 70s, early 80s. Um, some of their products being the Street Sweeper, which was a rotary, rotary magazine 12-gauge shotgun based off the arm cell striker. They made a ladies' companion version, which was a uh, scaled-down model in 410 bore. They also had the Terminator single-shot shotgun. And, of course, Mac-10, Mac-11 clones. And uh, Cobra initially produced these as semi-auto open-bolt weapons, and they also had some select fire... Um, some select fire machine gun variants, but this at the height of the war on drugs or correction at the beginning of the, the beginning middle ish of the war on drugs, the ATF really saw these as the weapon of the the drug dealer cartel member and really cracked down hard on Cobra Mac Ten clones and forced them to only fire from a closed bolt, since the, the ATF felt that the, these weapons firing from an open bolt were too easily converted to select fire. And Cobra ended up suing the ATF, but lost subsequently. So, this model, this, this weapon specifically, uh, was made by SWD, um, made by a manufacturing consortium called SWD, which was nominally under Cobra's control. And SWD stands for Sandy and Wayne Daniels, Sandy being the wife of Wayne Daniels, the founder of um, Cobra itself. It's kind of some shady business going on there. Um, Cobra is, very, is a very difficult comp I found to be a difficult company to research. There's no real Cobra Collectors Club, and no one has developed a real database for serial numbers of uh, Cobra Mac 10 and Mac 11 clones. Maybe I'll go on to found the Cobra uh, Collectors Club. And really, like again, I try not to give a super biased opinion on firearms that I review or shoot matches with, but this thing really is made out of pot metal and street crime. Uh, when I purchased it and I did my first field strip, um, I did a functions check after putting the weapon back together and the uh, firing pin shattered into a thousand pieces on the first trigger press and I had to replace it. Ended up going with one from a company called FTF which makes better quality replacement parts for these guns. Also you see here this piece of electrical tape is not for aesthetic reasons it's because it holds this trigger pin in place because the original um, e-clip that goes on this pin does nothing other than fly off in random directions when you fire this thing. It's cheap, uh, dis I would consider it to be disposable, especially if you were using it in a street criminal style of operation, not saying that I would, but I could see that you could use this one time and then dispose of it easily without losing much sleep. And the big reason why I wanted to talk about it today uh, on this channel and, and shoot it for you guys is because it's really, in terms of employment in a, in a, a practical role, whether that's everyday carry or duty or action shooting, it's really neither fish nor fowl. If this had, if this weapon was select fire and had a shoulder stock, it would be a submachine gun and be employed as such. If it was a little bit smaller and could fit in a Kydex holster, it would be a semi-automatic 
duty-sized handgun. However, it falls in neither of those categories, and thus I have difficulty coming up with ways I would employ it. So I figured I'd shoot it in the local uh, Thursday night action sh uh, shooting matches that go on at my local indoor gun range. And coming up with a division for this weapon was difficult. Uh, again, because of the things I just listed, where it doesn't fall into any specific category. Um, it's Since it is in 380 auto, it technically violates USPSA regulation. However, the local match at, on Thursday nights only loosely follows USPSA, so I can get away with shooting this in 380. Also, it does not have a sh shoulder stock. However, it cannot fit safely in any holsters I own or can procure. So, I'm going to em uh, employ it or, or put it under the PCC category. And I will also demonstrate three different ways of holding this weapon uh, on each stage. It is, since it's a three-stage match, so the first way I'm going to try it is with my strong hand on the grip and my support hand holding the weapon down uh, with this nylon strap here. I'm going to try really hard not to muzzle myself. The second way I'm going to employ it is by holding on to this. This is a factory OEM supp uh, fake suppressor from Cobra. Oh, I'm going to screw it on to the muzzle, the threads on the muzzle here. And I'll wrap it in some canvas, and of course I'll be wearing gloves, fingerless gloves naturally, since this is a bad guy gun. And I will be employing it in kind of a H&K, um, MP5K push-pull method, uh, and we'll see how that works. Finally, uh, excuse me while I unscrew this monstrosity, I will be attempting to shoot it in a standard handgun thumbs-forward grip. Really, we're going to see, is this weapon superior to a standard duty handgun, such as a Glock 17 or my beloved Walther PDP? Some people think so, because they, they argue that this holds way more rounds than a typical Glock 17 magazine, and that even in semi-auto, you can just spray the thing from the hip. However... In an EDC or duty context, that's not really feasible. Since you're accountable for all rounds fired, and you have to be wary of your backstop and bystanders around you. So, uh, later in this video, I will be shooting that match. Um, the footage will be like the Detonics match, where the mostly unedited and uncommentated... Uh, with the exception of probably a malfunction counter, because I was told that was popular uh, last time I did that. And, uh, yeah, it'll, you'll get to see how this thing fares. I seriously hope I can at least finish the match without a major uh, breakage or a DQ. So, stay tuned for more.
finished on moon. I want to show clear. Right. Welcome back, guys. So, as you can see, those stages were not great. And usually when people don't do well with firearms, especially me, I like to say that a bad workman blames his tools, where it's usually not the firearm's fault, it's your fault because of a lack of training or a uh, mistakes made on your part as the shooter. However, I cannot say that with this weapon because it did not set me up for success. So let's just jump right into pros. Also, please excuse my raspy voice and death rattle cough. I am currently dying from consumption. Uh, so, pros. This thing is very heavy and shoots a very anemic cartridge. It is, has almost no recoil. And, you know, in a fun range toy plinking setting with your buddies... It's, it would be fun. It's, it's honestly kind of fun to shoot. Uh, that's it for pros. Let's go into cons now. So, accuracy. It, you look at the rear sight here. Excuse me, I'm trying not to flag myself. I know this gun's clear, but it's habit. It's got a uh, notch, and then it's got a rear peep with a piece of TIG weld uh, material for a front post. Uh, let's face it, guys, the, this means nothing. Uh, it was really hard to get a sight picture because your eye, uh, my eye was um, jumping between th the, the aperture and the notch the entire time. And it, it was making me like have vertigo. And I ended up just ignoring the rear sight and just indexing off the front for uh, most of the match. Uh, and trigger was also, it, it's there. It's a trigger. It drops the sear and that sends the hammer into the firing pin and that's about it. Uh, <coughs> uh, luckily, so someone uh, installed a piece of rubber as a shoe on the trigger. That's actually, I will admit that is a pro because these are notorious for uh, what's called snapback, where the trigger has a pretty violent reset and it will hurt your finger. But someone rectified that with what looks like just a piece of like electrical tape with some rubber attached to it. Uh, very uh, ghetto solution. And I don't really have much room to talk because I currently have a piece of black electrical tape installed. And I tried <coughs> the three different grip styles I mentioned uh, in the intro. Uh, in the first one, uh, first stage, I used this front strap here. This was dangerous. Uh, absolutely dangerous, especially on that reload I did on the first stage. I had a lot of difficulty reacquiring the strap. And um, I came very close to muzzling my hand at that point, which is not really good when you put rounds through your own appendages. So th this is this is not just garbage. This is absolutely dangerous. Second stage, I tried shooting it like a standard handgun with my thumbs forward. Uh, this actually worked the best out of all techniques. It gave me the most control, gave me the strongest grip. I managed, that, the second stage was my best stage. I shot it uh, in 1390, so almost so just under 14 seconds. Uh, cleared it with no uh, no shoots, no misses, uh, and got a, a 4.5 hit factor. Which would be, if I was shooting uh, USPSA like carry optics, that would be kind of on the mediocre side for me. However, I will absolutely take that with this gun. Final way I shot this was by attaching this monstrosity to the threads on the muzzle. 
and holding it by this for dear life. Uh, this was also dangerous. Uh, I had a long discussion with the, uh, <coughs> the the range safety officer about using this thing. Uh, I I didn't really trust the threads on it. Uh, really wasn't sure if they're concentric enough, but we determined that the port was big enough that it could. It, there was no real danger of a round uh, skipping off the inside and coming up through my hand. <coughs> However, I could feel this thing unscrew the entire time I was shooting, and it was nerve-wracking. Also, saw a, I saw a major decrease in reliability with this uh, tube installed. Uh, I don't really have a good explanation for it. I'm like Oddball from Kelly's Heroes. It's Donald Sutherland's character talking about his M4 Sherman where he says, hey man, I don't fix them, I just ride them. And that's basically how I am with firearms. I understand how they work. I can do some basic installations and uh, mount sights to things, put triggers in. But besides that, talk, like, talk about mechanics and Things like dwell time, headspace, I'm not so good at that. So, all I can say is that this already had some issues with reliability without the tube on, and adding this made it worse. So, this at best is flashy, trashy, blingy junk. Anyway, reliability. Um, I... I had a lot of malfunctions and a lot of malfunction clearance. So basically, for malfunction clearance, I treated this like an AK where I'd remove the magazine and cycle the bolt to the rear, reinstall the magazine, pull the bolt to the rear, hope for the best. And I had to do that a lot. And this mag release is awful. It's very stiff. Uh, it scrapes up my hands, and this magwell is like putting a proton torpedo in a two-meter exhaust port on the freaking Death Star. You really have to be spot on on this guy. So, that uh, covers it for pros and cons. Um, here's my unprofessional opinion, and that is, this is a fun collector piece slash plinker range toy <clears throat> this goes really well with the 80s pre-bands i have in my safe really makes my safe feel like it's the prop room for miami vice which is fun uh i like the aesthetic because yeah I, I watched way too much miami vice as a as a child plus a lot of arnold schwarzenegger movies and I also listen to a copious amount of West Coast gangster rap where these are heavily featured in the lyrics. So, fun piece of nostalgia history. Do not carry this. Do not use this in a practical environment. Do, please do not get in a, a civilian ccw EEC shootout with one of these unless you want to end up in the icu because it's not good for th that um <coughs> personally i think it's in between it doesn't have a very well-defined role so it'd be better like my again a unprofessional opinion it would be better to have uh, something one step above this or one step below and what I mean by that is like one step above this would be like um, an mp5k or a an SBR 9 millimeter AR um, One step below would be like a standard duty handgun that you can put in a holster a, a Glock 17 or a Walther PDP something like that those have those weapons have defined roles which they're made for. This really doesn't. Um, I would call it an area denial weapon. Uh, there is no accuracy whatsoever. It typically would shoot 
one round really high and then one round really low. And I hit a lot of no shoots. Um, only stage I cleared with no no shoots was second stage. First stage I hit almost every no shoot. Uh, and third stage did absolutely did also the same. Uh, this is not a good weapon if you're try if you're accountable for every round that comes out of the muzzle, which you are if you uh, actively carry a firearm in a CCW setting or in a duty setting for law enforcement security. Uh, I mean, if you're a bad guy, yeah, and you don't give a crap about collateral damage. I guess this would be fine. However, like you're you use this in a street crime uh, related career path, your days are numbered anyway. So yeah, uh, that's my uh, re review on this as an expert's weapon. Uh, it's not even really an expert's weapon. It's a uh, thing I've made it I don't really know what else to say about it I'm kind of disgusted by it anyway that's all folks thank you for tuning in and supporting the channel you can leave a comment if you want you don't have to it's you're you're a great American uh, either way and uh, stay safe train hard uh, I'll see you on the next one